this Sunday morning. Here I'm here with the uh, powerful Kelly Bowker. Kelly, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you had a lot of things planned this morning, but uh, I'm, I'm grateful to this morning. I'm tickled to be here. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> sure. Um, I had to have you on. I listened to a couple of your interviews and your story, and I was just so fascinated. One, with your energy, right? Like we had a conversation prior to this, and you just, your energy is so attractive, right? Like I love it. People are drawn to you, uh, your work and your message. Um, without going too deep into it, right? Like your journey is still fairly new. It's only, you're only two years deep into your work right now. How many books have you written so far in the, in those two years? I have written two books in the last year, actually. Since, since last August, I've written two books and published them on Amazon. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So like how long does it take you to write a book, right? I mean, it's just flowing out of you. Well, well, first off, let's give some context. Like, you're writing these books through um, the, the modality of, of channeling, right? Like, so can you explain to the audience well, like who you're channeling? Well, somewhat. I mean, um, the first book a year ago, August, it took four weeks, and then it and then it it took four weeks to get it written, and then it took me probably three months to overcome the fear around technology to get it out onto Amazon. So that that's its own thing. The, that the easy part was the writing it. Facing the technology was the overwhelming part. Um, but that first book, I wanted to tell my story. I just felt very compelled to tell my story. And when I was done, I knew the guides had led me to do that because when, you know, I channel almost every day. And so when I don't go back and listen to the old channels all that often, now that I'm doing my YouTube channel, I'm doing that much more easily i'm watching and listening to my stuff myself over and over again um but i didn't back then and so when i went back <clears throat> and i went back to the very first download that i got from my guides that at that time they identified themselves as la cruz and it was a very familiar energy when it first came through it was a very familiar energy very loving and kind and um I would sit down with my phone on my chest and I would I would just get these downloads and I would ask questions in my mind and then they would repeat them out loud. They, you know, they'd say, you have asked, blah, 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 you know. And so when I listened back, it would make sense to me. So that first book was basically, I gave a little bit of a story of my life, very, very small amount. And then I transcribed a download and talked about the effect and what I was going through in my head as these things are happening. And I think it would be helpful to people. It's not very well written. I can honestly tell you that I, I did the best I knew how to do. Um, but it is, it's a good story. It's a good story. And there's a ton of wisdom in it for how to live. And, and, and if you are on a journey of this kind of awakening, um, I think it would be helpful because you do question, you wonder if you're going nuts, you know, you, you wonder if you're making things up and, and all of that is normal. And I think that for people to hear someone else's experience, I think it's kind of validating. So the first book came out, you know, that was, that was quick, quite quick to write. The second book I thought was going to pick up where my first book left off. But my guides had a different idea about things. I, it took me some stops and starts to get going. The, when I when I got my first book finally out on Amazon, I think it was in November. Um, I that next Monday morning when Michael went off to work, I sat down and started to write, and fell on my face. It didn't work because I thought I was going to do the same thing. They had a whole different idea, and so after I finally my ego brain let go of my plan that I had. And I'm just did kind of, okay, come on now, what the heck are we supposed to be doing here? Then it started to flow. And what they wanted me to do is they wanted me to sit down, ask, what are we going to write about? I would get a drop in of like a title for a chapter. And then I would, in Kelly's mind, I would write about my experiences up to that point with that topic. 
and I'd be writing along and my jaw would start to shiver and I would write. The guides have something they want to say and I would stop and I would, I would download whatever it was that they wanted to say about the topic and I would put that into the book. And so it was a much more, it was, it was certainly a much more of a collaboration and me bringing things together from my perspective until the angels came through. And so I'm, I'm doing this day by day, sitting down when I have time. I let joy guide me. So it's, if something feels right and feels fun, I do it. If it doesn't, I don't. And that's, I think that's how we're supposed to live our lives. Um, and so when it, when it felt good to sit down, I would. And one particular day I sat down and I, I said, okay, what are we going to write about today? And they said, go get blah, blah, blah book. And they showed me the cover of a book that I owned. And I thought, okay, I knew where it was. I bought it probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago, and it never read it. It was a book about angels that I just, it was, I had gone to this event and I bought the book. Well, I bring it out and I sit back down and I say, okay, what do I, what do, I do now? And they said, write the names of the angels into this document. Okay, so I did. Now what? And they said, each angel will come through and write a chapter in your book. And at that moment, I practically fell off the chair. I started to sob. And I just, I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. How am I supposed to do that? And I just was overwhelmed. I'm sobbing. And now I know at the time I didn't know it was the angels. But now I know that angel Ariel came to me. And took me through a meditative process that helped me to release unworthiness. It was the unworthiness that was holding me back. That I, Who am I to bring through an angel? Well, I'm here to tell all of your listeners, we're all here to bring through the angels. We all are worthy to bring through the angels. There's nothing special about me. Not a freaking thing special about me. I just guess I, I happen to hit in the right frequency. I don't know. <laughs> but, so, so then that's what happened. The angels wrote the second, basically the second uh, portion of my book is all from them. It is absolutely beautiful. And I can say that with all humbleness because I didn't write it at all. It is completely channeled information. And I, I would sit down and I would just say, they said, sit down and say the name of the angel. And I would just repeat the name of the angel in my head. Or, in, or out loud, and I would feel the energy start to move. And I, even though my Kelly head was going, I can't believe this is real, and I can't believe it's really happening. I remember, I think it was Angel Gabriel was one, the funniest one. And when he came in, the first sentence out of my mouth was, "Yes, by gory, this is Angel Gabriel." And I'm like, "Oh my God!" You know, so it was just crazy. And and he, they each had their own personalities and. It was friggin' awesome. It was awesome. And they, <laughs> they brought through some wonderful stuff. My second book, I read it myself over and over and over again because I can't, you know, you can't take it all in and put it all into practice. It, it It's just full of beautiful, they call it tips, tricks, and hacks of how to maintain your frequency. The name of my second book is Establishing Your Frequency. And that's what it's about. It's about how do we main, live our life keeping our frequency at the level that's going to bring the rainbows and the unicorns in. And that's what mm -hmm. we want, right? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could not agree with you more on that because it's so easy for us to go into these isolation like periods in our lives, right? Like, or, you know, do our meditation, do our practices and get on that high frequency. But then when we go out into the real world, you, you get, um, exposed to those lower vibrations, right? Like whether it's at work or, or at a party or out in uh, society, essentially, and it brings you back down. So being able to read a book like yours, right. And, and connect with that message and then to go back out into the world and like, keep that vibration like going, but also knowing that that's the part of the human process, right? Like you're going to, you know, this is the reason why we're doing the work is because we're raising that, that, that vibration, that, that is a collective, right? Like it, it, it's going to take work. It's going to take time and, uh, it's going to be uncomfortable. Uh, but going back to your first book, right? Like, um, how did you know you were channeling, right? Like, how did you know, like you come from a very rich dogma, right? Like, and to write a book about your story, one had to be pretty scary and releasing that in a small town that you're from, 
And then two, uh, speaking about your guides, right? Like, how did you know you were channeling um, La Cruz, or if, if I'm saying that right? Yep, you are saying it exactly right. Um, how do you know? I, I, you just, you know, it's not you because he's smart for one thing. <laughs> you know, I mean, the wisdom and the and the the stuff that comes out. One of my dearest people in my life, my my first cousin, she's she just turned eighty, and she said when she read the book, she said Kelly, she said, you know, I. I hear your voice when you're writing, and then I know it's not your voice when it's the channeled stuff. She said, I, I, you know, she's known me my whole life. And I said, I said, I know that too. I know that too. For other people, I, it's a wonderful, free and liberated place to be in the energy of, I have not any feelings at all. Like I have to convince anybody of anything, um, which is a blessing because the old Kelly, the pre this Kelly would be very, oh God, what are people thinking? I don't care. I don't care because I feel it. And when, when they come through, Trey, it's like you're getting a cosmic hug. The energy just is, it's magical. It's magical and it's loving and it's kind and they're leading me to understand the world in a way that makes me not feel pounded by the by the world, by the energy of the world. I'm an empath. You and I, when we had our chat, we talked about being an empath in this world. And I didn't even know what an empath was until I was 59 years old. And so I lived being the sensitive soul, not understanding that everybody didn't feel the world like I felt the world. And being so subjected to everybody else's moods and everybody else's, you know, and then you put the inner child on top of that of, you know, most of us have a thread of it's our responsibility to make you happy and you happy and you happy. And, you know, we all, a lot of us battle with that. You put that all together and I wasn't living my authentic life. I was living, reacting to the world. And, and now I don't. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. So I want to really specifically answer the question, how did I know that I was channeling? My body shook, my jaw trembled, the the flow and the cadence came through in a way that was very different. And and in that beginning time, it was difficult. And you know, I'm in my head going, holy shit. (laughs) And yet there's this stuff coming out of my mouth while this holy shit is going on over here. That is why when it was over, you sit and you're like, did I just make that up? Did I, (laughs) did I just do, you know, and it took time. It took time to get to the place where I knew that I didn't. And, and because they are so kind and so gentle. And so the, the, the concepts and the knowings that they were bringing through were things that at that time I could honestly say were, were part of already part of who I was. I might not have been able to walk it the way that I would want to walk it, but I had a knowing around it. It it was a it was quite a bit of time. Before, it actually it was after the light language came through. Was when these big concepts that were different than anything I'd ever been exposed to started to come through with a lot of energy and a lot of physical manifestations and whatnot. So, so yeah, you know, you just I guess you just you test it. You know, you test it. I would say to people, you know, does it resonate? It, it always is about love. It always is about living your best life. It's always about being the highest version of yourself that you can be. You know, those are the litmus tests. If you hear somebody that's saying you're doing this wrong and that wrong, that's not of spirit. They don't, mm-hmm. they, there, is no, there is no, they don't come at things that way. At least that's not my experience. Sure. Well, I think that's the number one question, right? When people start channeling or get exposed to that, right? Um, is am i making this up like is this channeling it's not my thoughts but yet it is um coherent concepts that are not mine and i've experienced that in myself too right like receiving messages but not really knowing what where they're coming from or 
I didn't think that like that sentence is not mine, but yet it helps me grow spiritually. So I think that your book could help others um, open up to the idea of channeling more so, right? And hearing your story and connecting with that and resonating with the struggles that you had, right? Especially um, the dogma that um, was associated with your background and working through that. I'm sure there was like some, you know, terror in like, um, like, like with your programming of like, is this good? Is this bad? Am I supposed to be doing this? Like, is, is this of God? Is this of the devil? Like, you know, that, that those sort of things, right? Yeah, for sh- you know, for sure, a little, a little bit, I could say. Um, but when you're experiencing it, it doesn't take long to to not have that feeling, or at least it didn't for me. But like we said, I mean, I haven't, I channeled my guides the very first time January It'll be two years ago this coming January. So this has been a very, very, very expedited experience for me. You know, it has been a very fast, fast journey. Um, But, you know, I think for anybody who I can remember having big spiritual conversations with friends over my lifetime. And I remember saying the words, if I ask a question in my head, it's like I get the answer. I remember saying that way many, many years before I ever channeled. And I didn't, it was like, huh, you know, I didn't know the, I didn't even know how to talk about it. Or I, it was, I just always, and I've always had access to wisdom that was far beyond my years. I would, I can remember being a teenager and having, you know, 20 and 30 and 40 year old people talking with me and at them hanging on my every word. And when I would be done, I'd kind of be thinking to myself, huh, you know, I, I even, you know, I just, it was who I was. I always was a deep thinker. I always, and what I would say to people is it's that, it's that voice that's back here. You know, our, our conscious brain, our egoic brain is up here. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, you know, you say to yourself, should I do blah, blah, blah? And you get a, a pum pum back here. It's going to be fast. It's not going to be laborsome. It's going to be boom, there's an answer. But then we take that and we bring it up and we look at it and we dissect it. And we, well, am I just convincing myself? Am I telling myself, oh my goodness, what am I doing? You know, and then by then we've screwed it all up and you might as well not have asked the question because you, you're not hearing the answer. And sure. so learning to navigate that, learning to trust that, what I would say to people is write it down. The minute you get it, write it down and then go on with your life and then refer back and be like, okay, if I'd have listened to that, or I did listen to it and this is what happened, or I didn't listen to it and this is what happened. And that's maybe how you could learn how to navigate it. Sure. I I didn't have to do that. For me, that that is something <clears throat> I have heard Suzanne Giesman talk about doing. And I, but it makes perfect sense that at, you know, if if I had known about this back before I channeled, it would have made perfect sense of how to figure out in my thoughts. Because I still, I still struggle with, because I can channel and because I have the physical manifestations that come through when I channel, I know it's them when I channel. When it's my thoughts, I don't have that validation. And so I don't, I don't bother do it that way. I channel it because I can. That's a good point. Um, What is light language, right? Like I've heard you say that a couple of times. And then in our previous conversation, you actually spoke like language before you did the channeling. Um, what exactly is that? Light language is, is, will be a part of any channeling I do. Um, I heard a beautiful, just this morning, a friend uh, sent me a YouTube video and I listened to it while I had coffee this morning. And she gave a beautiful, beautiful explanation of what light language is it is the language of source and it is made up of all that source is made up of which is everything and so when there is a calling forth when there is a an intentional asking perhaps you know you know i a person might be 
striving or working towards a goal or whatever, and 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 maybe they come to me for a one to one session. I don't know what they need, but their source does. Our source does. It's all one. Source knows what you need. And so when I bring through light language, I am reaching across dimensions, across timelines, across incarnations and realms. And these, those are words the angels gave me. I had never spoken those words before. That when the angels, the angels taught me that we have power across all, because all is now. Now is the only moment. So if I'm vibrating from my heart and I'm sending a frequency out with my intention across all dimensions and timelines, realms and incarnations, it is traveling. It is traveling and it ha- is having an effect, a positive effect if I'm, if I'm doing that kind of thing. So when I reach, I'm reaching with my heart through love and light for the highest intention for the individual or myself, if it's for me. And light language can carry codes and frequencies that can literally unlock us. I've had light language come through that knocked me down, literally knocked me down. And when it did, it came with this knowing. It would be like a download on steroids and downloads started out by, you know, conversation. Then after light language came, it would be this, I call it the pixie dust. It would be like this, bam. And I'd be like, oh, 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 okay. Oh, oh, I get it. I understand. And it it came in with the light language. And it the, the best way that I can understand it is it's a key. It unlocks our ability to understand it unlocks something within us i've listened to some wonderful i don't have any any proof of it my guides have said that the light language absolutely has an effect on dna and then i started to do some investigation out on online and i found in the metaphysical world there is a theory around that that dna that we all have that scientists call junk dna or dormant DNA. There's DNA, and this is a scientific thing, I guess, that all humans have this DNA that science, scientists don't know what, what it does. They know what a certain amount of our DNA does. The rest of it, they don't know what it does, so they just discount it like God makes mistakes, right? No, that DNA is the DNA that's in us that holds within it the knowings of who we are. I that is as I say that I can feel my jaw start to tremble, which means the guides are saying, "Yep, that's exactly right." It's who we are with all of the abilities. We are a fractal of God, you know. And you think of of Jesus walking this earth and what we know about Jesus. Jesus healed people. Jesus could change matter. He he turned water to wine, which is changing matter. You know, think of the things. And he said, everything I can do, you can do too, and more. And I I believe with my whole heart that, it, that we are at a place in history where conversations like this are making us just open our mind to the possibility that we all have these, these abilities within us. And we just have to get out of the way. We have to just get out of the way, move our ego out of the way, and let the glory that is us come through. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to change uh, water into wine? (laughs) I have no. But you know what? I haven't tried either. (laughs) To be be absolutely honest, I haven't tried. You know, you you have 61 years of programming. It's like I... I am in the process, and this is how I talk about it. I'm in the process of stepping out of my rheumatoid arthritis. I'm definitely feeling myself being better and better every day. They have said, it doesn't take time. I could could literally step into the timeline where this body has no physical issues at all. But I've got 61 years of programming saying that's not possible. I'm human. I'm human. I have all that same stuff that everybody else has. So it gets in the way. And I just, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on processes. I love the most recent process. I, I'll share it if you'd like me to. Sure. Um, it, 
It is absolutely glorious. It is the most recent process that when something gets your attention in what you, we call our reality, this moment right now, something gets our attention that we don't like and we don't want to look at. My husband, I don't watch the news. And my husband will be like, oh no, this just happened. I'm like, Mike, I don't watch the news for a reason. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I have no desire to know. I shine my light as bright as I can. And I know that is the power I have in this world. And knowing about everybody's bad things that are happening just dims my light. That's not helping anybody. I want to shine my light. I want to shine my light. So they've given me this beautiful process and I call it the sandbox process. And it has been developing and it is fun. And it just, something comes in, maybe one of my children, something bad happens and they have to share it with mom and, or maybe, you know, whatever it is, something comes in my experience that I don't like. I picture myself, I have this internal vision of almost like I'm in a castle and I'm looking down at the moat that's around my castle. And in that moat, there's the bad stuff. It's all the yucky stuff. And so if somebody says something, it's like, oh, that's in that moat. And in my mind, I jump over my moat with my, with my intention and my brain. And I find whatever sandbox I want to play in. And I have multiple sandboxes. I have a sandbox where I'm being interviewed by Oprah. I have a sandbox where I'm on Next Level Soul and I'm with Michael Sandler. I, you know, I want, I want to do those kinds of things. I'm not going to be sad if I don't, but it's fun to think about. So I just play with that. I play with the idea of it. I have a wonderful sandbox where I have the most glorious unicorn. The unicorn has, has developed in my mind into this big, strong, powerful animal. And I can see, I can feel running my hand down her beautiful, oh, she's a her, just found that out, her beautiful neck, just that, oh, the strength and the muscles and According to how much I want to do, I might jump on her back and we go flying out through the cosmos. You can't play those games in your mind for very long without raising your energy. You're feeling frolicky and fun. You're not, it's, it, is a, it is a technique to consciously take control of your mind, which then results in the frequency coming up. And that's the object of the game. Mm -hmm. So I don't let my mind grab onto the now I'm saying I never do. Of course I do. These are things I use with regularity. Something happens, it's upsetting. I feel my physical human reaction. I feel sad. I feel mad. I feel whatever. I take a couple of breaths into my heart. I picture my energy flowing and balancing. I use my intention and I, because I know that those kinds of things knock our energy out of balance. So I balance, I just, I just balance my energy and then I jump over the moat and I jump into whatever sandbox I can get into and I just start to play in that sandbox. Then that grumpy thing grabs me and I let it go again. I picture it flowing away from me hang on to that unicorn as hard as I can. And it is, it is a, our egoic mind needs a thing to hang on to. And so give it a thing that holds magic. Play, I have this magical pawn of, of energy that I play in. And I'll picture myself if I'm grumpy, grumpy going up the ladder of the of the diving board i'm grumpy and i'm grumpy and i'm grumpy but it's getting a little less and a little less and a little less get to the diving board do a great big jump and i go boosh, into this magical pond of energy and i splash the iridescent bubbles go everywhere and then i do the backstroke you play in your mind and your energy will come back up again and then guess what everything you want in life starts to come to you you're living this beautiful, happy, joyful life. And what I say to people is if I'm absolutely full of shit, if I am so out to lunch that nobody, nobody can stand it, the price I'm paying is this happy life. That is, that is what I'm sacrificing. I'm, I'm sacrificing the worry. I'm sacrificing the grump. And I'm, I'm managing to live with all this joy. <laughs> that's the price I'm paying. So I don't think that's a bad price. That's not a bad price at all. Mm -mm. Um, we had a conversation too, right? 
if you can raise your frequency up, right, I feel like that can alter your physical reality, like to your point. Absolutely. But you've made some mentions before, right? Like there's been examples of this where people have lived different realities, like the Mandela, Mandela effect, where people experience totally different realities than the masses, right? So if we are able to raise our frequencies consistently, to your point again, I feel like we can experience a different reality. And since you've implement, implemented this practice, have you experienced different realities than other people? I had a, an incredible, one of those big downloads that the light language brought through was around timelines. And this was completely new to me and it came through and just like a boom. And I laid on the couch trembling all over while this just ensconced itself into my knowing and into my brain. And the what they explained is there is nothing that is not real if you have if you have ever thought about you know oh our world is going to hell in a handbasket and we're going to kill it with our pollution and we're ruining it we're blah 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 is there a reality where that all plays out yes but there's also the reality that when you hold the vision of our Mother Earth driving, doing whatever she needs to do, that's a reality too. It's the reality. What reality are you choosing? So when you say, like, like have I experienced glitches in time where I've been able to absolutely, like, know, you know that I'm shifting? I can't say that. But what I know for sure is that I am affecting my experience with all the people around me. All of a sudden, since I have put this into practice, you know, I I used to get multiple phone calls a week where my kids would be grumping, telling me this and that. I'm I'm almost I actually hung up with my son the other day and I thought, my God, this is like the fifth or sixth phone call in a row where he's telling me all the great stuff that's happening in his life. And I just see it. I see my kids having all the stuff they want. I see them in love. I see them growing old with their their loved ones and, and having the kind of love Mike and I have. You know, I, I just keep seeing it. And now, now that I know, I law of attraction took me to a point. But the part that would mess me up is when I would think, well, how can my reality be rainbows and unicorns when this person's reality over here, all they can see is the end of the world. How does that happen? They get to have their timeline. They get to have it. I get to have mine and I'm going to have an experience of that individual. If it's somebody that I care about, I'm going to have a version of them on my timeline. I get to have this experience of them. So do I believe there are timelines where my kids are wallowing in crap and maybe my husband's not healthy and maybe we're poor and maybe blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think there's all that stuff. But the timeline that I'm going to line my vibration up with, everybody's glorious. And, and I believe because I've only, they've only just given me this knowing in the last, oh God, let's say six or eight months maybe. It's been, it's been coming in layers of understanding. And now I'm working, and I shouldn't say working, I'm allowing myself to just revel in that understanding that the more I frolic and dance, the more music's going to play. And, and it's, a, it's, just, it's just a beautiful, it's just a beautiful way to, to go about the world. You don't, I've had people come to me and they're like, you know, my husband, this or my husband, that. And I'm like, see your husband doing what you want him to do. Feel what it would be like to have that relationship with him that you want. You can, you can absolutely affect other people in your experience. And, and mm. that, you know, the Abraham Hicks stuff, it was like, you cannot, you cannot create for someone else. And that is true. You, Trey, are going to create your own timeline. And that is absolutely true. Me seeing you joyful and happy 
is going to give me that experience of you, but you get to create anything you want to create. So that was true. That That is absolutely true that each one of us is going to create our own reality based on our frequency. But Mm. I get to, because of my frequency, I get to have the experience of all the people I love being at my circus, you know, being at my party. I get to have it. I get to have it. And and I'm, that's the way I'm living. (laughs) Have you, have you, speaking to the circus, right? Like, has the circus was did this start two years ago, or have you always been this happy go lucky joyful individual? I when I was just a girl, I, I think one of the very first chapter books I ever read was Norman Vincent Peale's Power of Positive Thinking. I've always had a knowing that my mind had power. I just I was born to this earth with a with a great a knowing. And also that I knew that when, when I felt that love and, and what I, the language that I had to talk about it was through God and Jesus as a, as a young person, but I felt that love. I felt that love in my, in my body. I felt it when I was connected. And I never had any kind of experiences like what I'm having now, but I had that, just that love. I knew I was being cared for. That's why my first book is called Redefining Faith, because my faith brought me through a great deal of my life with the positivity, with, you know, if you think about what that is when you talk about, let's just talk about Christian faith. It's knowing that God wants the best for you. It's it's that knowing that there's a higher power and that they want you to be happy and that, you, you know, it's just a matter of you know, whatever it is, however you believe that you got to line up with that in order to, and the, the, you know, everything's working out for my highest good. I've, I've said that in my mind a thousand times. Oh my God, beyond, way beyond a thousand times. Everything's working out for my highest good. Well, now I'm just taking more of a proactive thing. What, what would that be? Proactive approach, I guess. Sure. Because, so I've always been a woman of faith. I always have been a woman of faith. And and I always knew I was loved. Even when I felt completely unlovable on this planet, I knew God loved me. And I always could feel the love that the universe had for me. I didn't know how to talk to it, but I always could feel it. And it just drew me forward. It drew me forward. I always knew there was better stuff coming. There was better stuff coming. I asked him, how come you waited till I was 59 years old? What the hell is up with that, right? Why do you wait until I'm this old? And they laughed and they said, you're talking like that you're old. You're talking like you're all done. And I'm like, well, I'm 60. It's like, come on, I'm not a spring chicken. And, and I loved it because they've given me this, I can't even talk about age now. It's like, I just have this, it's a part of the pro- program, right? It, it it's a it is a program that we have to decline. We have to get less than. We have to frig no, heck no. I am I'm not declining. My poor husband, he's tying a big ass knot and hanging on because he knows I I am I am going. I don't know where I'm going. I honestly I have no idea where I'm going, but I know that I'm going, and I'm just open to it. And I don't try to, you know, I, I heard someone speak about the specifics about, about how when we used to talk about manifestation and we used to talk about the law of attraction, people with all the preachers, or, you know, the people that talked about it, would <clears throat> get specific, visualize it, visualize the man you want, visualize the house you want, you know, be specific. And I never could do that. It, that never resonated with me because it was like, I just want to be joyful and happy. I don't care what it takes to make me joyful and happy. I just want to be joyful and happy. And that's why when I play in these sandboxes, like of, of the different interviews, I love, I love the thought of someday, I, a, a sandbox I play with is I love the idea of being on a stage. I'm a teacher. And I love the idea of being on a stage and speaking to thousands of people and being in the same room with them and feeling their energy. I love the thought of that, how much fun that would be. Now, if it doesn't happen, do I care? Mm-mm, don't give a shit. Don't care, bit. 
it, you know, the, what's the chances that I'm actually going to meet Oprah? Probably pretty slim. But I had the most glorious dream about Oprah that when I woke up from my dream, I swear to God, Trey, it was like it had happened. It was so real. And I can remember the way that we talked to each other and I was able to tell her what she's meant in my life. And she's meant a great deal to me. And I was able to tell her that. So if I never meet her in person, so be it. But it would be glorious if I did. You know, I think that's the energy that we need to, and there is no need, but that I would invite people to stick your toe into. The, the beautiful world of imagination and the, and the wonder and the what ifs. What if I did meet Oprah? What if? Why couldn't I? I could. Other people have. You know, it's not such an impossible thing. So I don't know. I just play. I just play in my mind. And what would be the first thing you say to Oprah? I manifested this. No, good God, no. <laughs> no, I, no, because that energy feels uppity to me. I, I, I think by nature I'm a pretty humble person. I just, I would just. What would be the first thing I would say to Oprah? Isn't this glorious? Isn't this glorious? That's what I would say. Isn't this fun? Can you believe this? <laughs> She'd be like, well, I don't know who the hell you are, but <laughs> 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 but I'd be doing, I would be just basking in, and I would certainly be basking in the knowing, because I believe that is absolutely perfectly fine to do, that I did have a hand in this. I would be basking in that knowing. I wouldn't, I don't think I would, oh, I probably would find a way to say it in a, in a, in a way that would just invite other people to it. But I certainly, I wouldn't want to come, I would never want to come across because I'm not doing any of this. This is all energy. This is not Kelly. I'm just a human being, just like all, everybody's just a human being. But I'm figuring some things out and I'm practicing it and I'm trying to, I, I think I'm trying to be a beacon, you know, like if I can shine my light bright enough and light the path to somebody else. But you know what, Trey, you know what they tell me? And this is what is so comforting to me. If I never do another interview, if I never put another video on YouTube, if I never talk to and do another one-to-one -one session, I'm going to live this joy. I get this life. I get to shine. And I know that you and I are one. I know I am one with every tree, every bird, every person on this planet and beyond. I know that I'm one with all creation. And so when I sit in this little room on in this little tiny town and my heart feels like it's filled right now and I just feel so so much love and so much connection and the energy is just rolling. I know that I'm sending that into the web that is connecting us all and I know it has a positive effect on all of you, all of us. And that that and when you do it, I'm feeling it. You know, it, it it's it is that is the glory because I when, when I had my first big interview and I got a lot of a lot of appointments and stuff, and it was very, very exciting for this little girl from friggin Lee, Maine. It was very exciting. And I thought, oh, goodness, here I am. This is it. I, I'm going to be up here now. This is what I'm going to be doing. But it didn't work that way. And it hasn't worked this way this time either. I, I had a lot of appointments after I was on the Jeff Mora podcast. And now it's flattened back out again. The first time that happened, it grabbed onto my ego. And it, it made me think and feel stuff that I needed to figure out. Now I have figured it out. It doesn't matter. It simply doesn't matter if I'm talking to one great guy or if I'm talking to 100,000 great guys. It doesn't matter. Because all I have to do is tend to me. All I have to do is play in the sandbox and, and tend to me, and I have done what I came here to do. Mm -hmm. mm. It's, I, it's, can't even, yeah, I can't even say anything after that, right? Like, that's just so <laughs> powerful. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, because I find myself doing that too, right? Like, even as a, a podcast host, there are people out there that have these platforms that are huge, right? And as a creator of content, like, I want to do the same thing, but is how much of that is ego and how much of that is actual, like, the heart desiring to be seen, right? Like, right. there's a balance and <clears throat> you have to walk that line. And I find myself doing that too, where I'll have an episode blow up and people are watching it and commenting and sharing it. And it wasn't necessarily an episode that I thought would take off, but yet it did. And then my ego gets inflated. And, and then, you know, for a while there be shows or episodes that don't, right? But still the message to me is like, I'm doing the work. Like I'm still putting this out there for people to watch and listen and hopefully become more open-minded to this type of information. But it's also me being a creator in that and right. creating cre creating happiness in myself. And I get caught up in the game too much where <clears throat> I'm trying to meet certain expectations that I think I should meet by society. You know, society places these expectations of what success is. Exactly. And in reality, I need to really define what success is and within myself. And what I love about you is like, you basically just, you know, you define it for yourself, but I resonate with that success isn't how many episodes you get. It's like, it's the joy that you can cultivate within yourself. If any of that makes sense. Trey, the, the thing of it is, it always comes back to the present moment. All we have is this present moment. How glorious are you in this present moment? How happy, how fulfilled? It isn't about when we get tripped is when we fall into the energy of down the road. How, how popular will this be? How many people is it going to touch? Blah, 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 blah. All of that. How much money will it generate? Um, all of these human things. And there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. There's nothing wrong with any of that stuff. But when, when we utilize the joy meter, and that is what we use to decide what we do next, we're going to, it's all going to work out because then you're working in the energy of spirit. If, if like, you know, when this all first started happening, everybody has an opinion. Oh my goodness, you should. You should have a website. You should have a this. You should have a that. Mm, you know what? No, I, I don't have to do anything. I don't should nothing. I don't, that just, I, that doesn't resonate with me at all. I'm open. Spirit knows that I'm open. And if there is something for me that I'm supposed to do, it's going to fall into place for me one way or another. And if that is just sitting out on my deck, having a cocktail, looking at my beautiful lake, then that's a great moment too. You know, I wrote my books and I've had people ask me about writing the books and blah, blah, blah. I wrote my books to write my books. I didn't write my books to have people read them. I wrote my book because it, it wanted to come forth. And I benefited from that. And the third book is coming. I can feel it churning. Maybe it will never get read. Now, do I have a sandbox where I play with, I have this thing on Amazon that you can you can check out, like how many books have you sold and how much how much revenue has it made, blah, blah, blah. And I have I have a sandbox where I picture this great big long number for for how much money I made off my books. Why not? I can pretend that. I can play with that. But am I connected to it? Now, now, can I can I tell you that I've never gone, oh, I haven't sold any this month. I have. Of course I have. I'm human. But as soon that's the thing I throw into the moat. Throw it into the moat. That's not, that's not serving me. Jump over it and play with that idea of a of a a million people reading that book and just thinking it's great. You know, it's like, that's the practice. That's the practice. And, and I'm blessed because I know people have to feed their families. And, and we live in a world that is based on commerce and money and all of that. And I'm blessed. That, and maybe that's why it happened for me the way it did, because I was, I was getting to, ready to retire. 
And so I had my ducks in a row to be able to retire. So, um, you know, I don't have to think about the sale of my book to feed my children. And if I did, that would probably put a lot of icky stuff into it that I would have to work it at letting go. So, mm. Drop the mic on that, huh? Wow. That was pretty <laughs> powerful. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, that's that thing. I, you got to remember, I'm in my 60s. I don't know all the cool things that we say dropping the mic and all that. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm working on being cool, so we're going to keep working on it. I, I like dropping the mic. <laughs> so sitting on your deck drinking a cocktail, enjoying the sunset, watching the stars in the skies, like isn't that just miraculous? Like isn't that just so joyful? But we we get caught in the fear of the future, the anxiety of the past, and we overlook the moment where the true gifts are, the true diamonds are in life. I do it all the time. Where the only diamonds are, buddy. The only. You can't look out into the future and find any diamonds, and you can't certainly look into the past and feel any of the diamonds from the past either. The only diamonds you have at your disposal are in the present moment. That's all you have. And when you live your life that way, it is miraculous. I mean, it is... It is the challenge. It is the challenge. Remembering our way back to who we are. Why did we, you know, people say, well, why did we decide to come to the earth and all the challenge, the crap and the bullshit and the this and the that? Because we wanted to experience and expand. How does God expand? By experiencing. And so we are a fractal of God down here tripping and falling, figure, figuring things out, doing better the next time, doing worse the next time. But anytime you do the worst, which I do, I have those crabby days. I have the, the thoughts that come out. I don't want to give any kind of impression that, you know, ask my husband. You want to find out the truth about Kelly Colleen, you ask Michael Boca, he'll tell you. <laughs> I can be a bitch. I can be hateful. I, I have my moments, you know, but... I try to come back from them as quick as I can. I heard a beautiful, oh my goodness, I don't know if you're familiar with um, Robin Lansong. Mm -hmm. Her story is incredible and she, her energy, she's such a beautiful, beautiful soul. And she, somebody asked her once about being triggered. And she, in her gentle and sweet and kind way, she said, yes, of course I'm triggered. She said, it isn't about not being triggered it's about how fast you bring yourself back to balance and I thought oh my gosh that is because the quicker you can let yourself off the hook for whatever it is you know you you whatever mm. whatever whatever brought you the negative energy you you got suckered into that rotten conversation you you know talking bad about somebody you know that doesn't serve any purpose for anybody but sometimes you do, you know, sometimes it just happens. You just let it go. Because, you know, my guides have said, my guides have said that when our light shines, they, I can almost see this visual. They're, they're very visual in my head. And I can almost see looking down at, at that web that we're all connected through. And you see uh, something's lit up over here and something's lit up and something's lit up and something's lit up. And they said, when we shine our light, they see it. But they're not looking at all of these over here that are dark. They're looking at the light that's shining here and the light that's shining here. They don't see us when we're being a grump. That isn't what draws the attention of source. They are, they are looking at all of the times when our light shines. And when we can really wrap our mind around that, that we absolutely... We are not being judged. We are not being judged by anybody except ourselves. There is no, this behavior is better than that behavior. Source doesn't, that was a hard thing for me to wrap my mind around. But source does not see, forgive me to all that this offends, but source does not see the rape or the murder as worse than the tripping and falling and scraping your knee. It's, a, it's an experience. It's an experience that humans can use for growth 
and to find their way back to who they are. It's all an experience. And you live your life experiencing the things that you are bringing into your experience because you you set an intention before you came forth to learn whatever it is that you decided you wanted to learn and bring back to your oversoul. So, you know, I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to your to your point, right, of the different experiences, but that doesn't give you a hall pass to do those things. Right. I mean, just oh, because, no, no. you know what I mean? Like that doesn't if mean, you're hey, lined, if, if you're lined up with your higher self, why would you, you would have no, there's no, it's, it is, it isn't. I love that question, Trey. That's let me, I gotta, I gotta bring let the guides help me a little bit right now. Let's get some light language in here. Yeah. Well, All right, so let's formulate the question and then I'll and then I'll bring them in. So what what we we want to ask about it isn't the fact that all behavior or experiences are equal from the perspective of source does not mean that we can participate in all those different things without any whatever. We're asking about that. If we're asking about humans participating in the cadre of behaviors and we're going to just see what the guides have to say about that and is there and is there any checks and balances with that associated with that right would that be karma or something similar yep so let's just see what they got to say Ora miana kiana kata arakototo sikiara katana ananamama. You must remember, dear one, that when you decided to come forth into the human experience, you agreed to duality. And duality is the idea of the opposites, that you cannot have joy without sorrow, that you cannot have up without down, the opposites. And so when you are looking at the the vast um, vibrational impact of behaviors on the continuum from the human perspective, it is the human's... um, vibrational response as they use these opportunities to navigate themselves back to their higher self. It is the human experience. What Kelly was trying to express is that from across the veil, from this side, as we watch these things play out, We do not have judgments around it. We are only calling you forward to find the greatest joy and the greatest expression of yourself in this lifetime. And so would someone such as either of you vibrating where you are vibrating the thought of any kind of behavior like that is abhorrent. But it also gives you the opportunity to shine the light of compassion, to shine the light of allowing even. And that is going to set hard with some who hear it. Because everyone on this planet is doing exactly what they are supposed to be doing in any given moment for their own evolution and often for the agreements that were made prior to coming. We would bring into discussion at this time the understanding that 
the human who is doing the atrocity came forth from pure love and positive energy. The greater part of them is pure love. And you are seeing but a tiny fractal, a, a drop, if you will, of water in the ocean of consciousness that is that personality. That is what you are seeing as the actor of the play down here on earth acting out the part. The people who have decided to come forward into the very difficult incarnations are the ones that come from the place of the most love. And when the human living their life and seeing the news and the, and the events and such, if it can draw from you that loving, compassionate response, then you have benefited and the all has benefited from that action. Nothing happens by mistake. There are no mistakes. Did that answer your question? Sure. It gives some type of context to what unconditional love is. But my next question is, how does the source benefit from those actions? If you remember that you are and we are all one, and that you have the bigger part of you, Kelly uses the term oversoul, you have that part which is part of the all which you can call source or you can call God. When you have the oversoul, the personality as we stated is but a single drop or fractal down here on earth. So when this vessel is done in this incarnation and the fractal that is Kelly goes back to the greater being that is her oversoul, she will take back with it the life lessons and the love and the Hmm. the experiences and the growth that happened during this incarnation and that which is her oversoul expands, which means that which is source expands. That is why you come forth. Hmm. Is <clears throat> they are... Is there certain levels to this expansion? Will source forever expand? Is that what the the purpose is of coming here? Is to is to expand more of that source? And is is there a, a certain limit that the source can expand to? That is a very interesting question. We would say to you that. You are thinking from a human and earth experience. There are great amounts that your soul will gain from the incarnations that happen on planet earth, but there are many, many more kinds of incarnations to have. Many sandboxes, as Kelly would say, to play in in this what you would call reality so there is no limit there is no hmm, there is no ability to measure that which you are discussing you it would be like saying is there a limit to beingness there are no walls that we are filling up with beingness. Our beingness is infinite. And such is also the beingness of source. And infinite it struggles to find the words 
just seeing the growth, the exponential growth for eternity. Hmm. Does the oversoul evolve like pure source evolves in, 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 in expansion? Does it, I'm trying to understand the connection, right, between Trey and Kelly and the oversoul and then the oversoul's connection to source. The, the human mind can only conceptualize to a degree, but we would utilize the using the thought of the ocean as source, uh, as has been brought forth by many besides Kelly. Visualize source energy as the ocean and one wave in the ocean as what we are referring to as your oversoul. And the drops within the drops of water that make up the wave as all of the tiny fractals that are coming forth and into many, many, many incarnations. Many, 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 many. And coming back to the wave, bringing with it all that it has gathered on its incarnation. And the wave is part of the ocean made up of exactly the same thing as so is the drop of the water. All made of exactly the same thing. The wave that is Trey and the wave that is Kelly, if the wind were to stop and the waves were to disappear, you only would have source of energy at that time. And you would know yourself as one. Hmm. So you spoke to us making agreements when we come here. And experiencing those agreements. But is our reality in which we experience malleable to where we can change it as we experience it? Meaning that is there destiny points? And the, if, sorry, if, if, go ahead. The answer to both of those things is, is a yes. Do you have. Um, pre-birth agreements and oh the the word contract is bantered about the yes the, those things do there are certainly soul families uh agreements that are made prior to coming forth that, that ha happen and creates what we show to kelly as road signs along the journey of life. What we have explained and given to Kelly is the understanding that there is an intention when you have come forth, perhaps to learn whatever it is. And there are uh, predetermined experiences along your path that have the potential of you realizing that level of knowing. If at this roadblock you do not get it, then the next roadblock, so to speak, or sign will manifest in your life. And you will continue, and often there's a portion learned at this sign and a portion learned at that one. And, and certainly this one would say that over her lifetime with her challenges, she learned and learned and learned. That is the human experience. But is it true that it could be said that at any given point along that journey, if you have the quantum jump, uh, the, the, the great awakening, the dark night of the soul that then lifts the veils off of your knowing, 
if that happens for you at any place along the way, then these predetermined happenings are no longer needed. So we want to be very specific and clear in this because this was a knowing that really took many of the sticking points of creating her own life that Kelly had when she would see what she wanted her future to be because she couldn't help being a woman of faith she couldn't help but say but if it is for my highest good that the cancer diagnosis or the this or that happens then so be it what she now knows is the reason for those things are for the learning and if you can be if you can learn if you have the events that happen so that you have the knowings, you don't need those events to happen. And so in any moment, Trey, in any moment, when you are in that high flying frequency, you are indeed on that timeline that has all that you want on it. But the human experience is such that you are at the mercy, so to speak, of your circumstances, your external circumstances. So something comes into your experience, and instead of throwing it in the moat and jumping into your sandbox, you take it in, and you render your clothing, and you gnash your teeth, and you are creating all of that energy, and you are clicking yourself off the timeline with the unicorns and the rainbows. Does that make sense to you? Yes. It's the human experience. It is because of your agreements to emotion and your agreements to duality that your this was the, the, the game that you agreed to play and the object of the game was to remember your way back to that none of this matters. None of this matters. It's the internal experience. And you've been given the gift of imagination. And people, it has been beaten out of you as a child. Come to reality, come back to reality when we're calling you to play in your sandbox. Utilize the beautiful gift of your imagination to create within you the experience that you would have. How does that one sit in the midst of the war or the catastrophe with peace? Because they claim peace. They are seeing something different than what their reality is showing them. That is the work. If we would use, we do not like that word. But that is the challenge, and that is the invitation that we are giving to you to enjoy stepping over reality into the future that you would have. And you do that in the beginning in your imagination and your frequency, then you will see it come in your experience. What, what exactly is imagination then? It is the playground that can generate any frequency that you enjoy. The sad part is, is humans are so conditioned to wallow in their negative emotions that they use their imaginations to create the catastrophe that's just around the corner. It is just as easy to create the circus or the fun or the whatever 
that then has that effect. It is the same thing. Think of how your worry creates the physical manifestation of your body and the ulcers and the anxiety attacks and the mental disturbances that humans are so prevalent. And it's because you are living in your imagination, but you're using it for the wrong thing. So go into your imagination and play. You visualize, you pretend, you see the beautiful unicorn and you spend time feeling the silky fur under your hands and feel the lift in your vibration at the glorious fun of riding that beautiful beast into the stars. That is as, as powerful as I'm going to lose my house because I can't pay the payments. And, and then you see the manifestations of that, the manifestations of the worry and the stress on the relationships and the, the physical down, decline. It is all imagination, Trey. It is all imagination, but it's using your imagination for what you don't want or for what you do want. It is a tool. Hmm. A tool to help us tap into that source power. Exactly. Wow. That was, that was awesome. That is, that was very clear. They've never put it together in my mind that way that we, we, what, what are we doing when we worry? What's our husband out? You know, you think of the people, what, what's my husband doing? Where, where is he at? He's probably get, he stopped at a bar. He's probably with a, another woman. He's, you know, think of how your imagination just takes off. Why? It, and, and yet, if I were to tell you that that was what I was thinking, you'd be like, oh, Cal, I'm so sorry. That, but when I, but when, what, what is your, what was your audiences? I would say this response when I was talking about playing with my unicorn. We have been conditioned to think, well, that's a waste of your time. Aren't you being silly? Aren't you being foolish to think you should be out playing with a unicorn or, or playing with Oprah or, or, you know, all that stuff, you're, you're being silly. That was conditioned to us when we were kids. Get your heads out of the cloud. Think of being in the classroom and, and I would, I've always been in my head. And have the teacher give you give you hell. Kelly, pay attention. Get your head out of the cloud. Stop daydreaming. When really, there's the magic. There's the magic we create through our daydreams. But we either are daydreaming for the beauty and the greatness or we're daydreaming for all the worry and the shit. Mm. That, 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 that was pretty clear. Wow. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kelly Bowker, this has been amazing. I cannot wait to speak to you again. Where can people find you? How can they con how can they connect with you? Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, Do you have a website? <laughs> I don't. I don't. If any of your viewers want to build me a website, come on in. I'll trade you all the all the folder all all the spiritual mentoring you can stand if you want to build me a website. It, I know it's going to happen when it's time. So no, I don't. I have a Facebook page, Kelly Bowker channel, that has the links on it to book an appointment. I do one-to-ones with people. Um, I also do group things. I love to be invited into groups. That's fun. Have a party and invite me in. I love that. Um, uh, and on my YouTube channel, Present Moment Magic, I almost always in the description put the link of how to make an appointment with me. Also, my um, my email address is kellybowker7 at gmail.com. And I would love, you know, anybody can reach out. And I'll, if the, it, I've got pretty specific hours available on my, on my app that I use for scheduling. But if it doesn't work for you, reach out to me and I can be, I can be flexible. Sure. I'd love to hear from anybody. I, I love this. This is joy. This is fun. This is a great way to start your Sunday morning, huh? It is a wonderful way. Wonderful way. I've enjoyed it tremendously, Trey. Thank you so much. Kelly, I can't thank you enough. Like I'm all fired up now, ready to use my imagination and, and imagine 
unicorns and sandboxes and the universe and flying through space. I can't thank you enough. Awesome. Thank you.